So again, I want to create a, cl a, a class that encapsulates a name so I can reuse that name in the employee and the company. So essentially, name is uh, something that represents a name for whatever uh, thing that I want to na name. So and um, when, I cre when I want to create a module to encapsulate something, uh, obviously I'm going to create two files, a header file and a CPP file and a class definition and declaration is going to reside in those but safeguards are the most important thing to have so I'm going to say if not defined and in here I'm going to say SDS name H and obviously I'm going to have a defined statement after that and bring the name in there and also put that one in a namespace dot stds and then come out in my name.cpp uh, let's split the windows so I can see both of them in my name.cpp I am including name and I'm gonna say namespace stds and now I have a blank canvas to start painting in and this is where I start thinking down to this point no brain cells are used I just went through standards, creating a uh, header file uh, and uh, a CPP file for the values that I have. Any questions down to here? So now that I have created this class, I want this class to represent a name. So a name essentially uh, is uh, a dynamic C string, and I'm going to call it M value that has some kind of a value that I want to show it, and that's that's what it is. Um, I need to I need to be able I need to be able to uh, set this name to something so constant character pointer name uh, that I'm gonna set it to or I can put value in here it doesn't make any difference name value name is good it's gonna be void uh, the next thing I need to be able to do if I want to copy this name somewhere I need to have the address of the uh, of the string that I have over here in a secure way so it is a good idea to re be able to return this thing securely so I'm gonna create a get function as which essentially gets the value out so it's gonna be a constant character pointer so I'm gonna convert that regular pointer to a constant character pointer through get I am going to return it out and that's gonna get the value next thing I would like to be able to do is to display this so be able to display that um, I would like to be able to read it so I need to be able to read it from console or from I need to be able to display it on O stream because now we know C out is an O stream and I need to be able to read it from I stream which we know it's C in obviously because it's a dynamic thing I need to deallocate it at the end so the allocation is what I want to do deallocate so these are the functions I want to create obviously yeah so these are the functions I want to create now here comes the questions so I'm gonna first activate your name random user is gonna be selected immediately you're gonna uh, turn on your microphone and I see Prabjot is not using is in listen only do not come to my classes in listen only please act have your microphone set it up please come in with microphone I do not like this and only anyways so let's select the first person and that's gotta be Sanjay so I want to hear a yes or a ready thingy so I know your microphone is working Sanjay you're there oh yeah uh, sorry I was somewhere uh, away uh, can you uh, ask again okay I'll ask again so uh, I am going to ask you a few questions about let me go to someone else if you haven't heard what I said before you won't be able to answer this so I'm gonna go with someone else uh, okay Prabjot doesn't have a microphone so let's go I'm not gonna ask myself again Prabjot uh, Tran can you turn on your microphone uh, yes I'm here all right so Tran my question is this when I use the set function I haven't implemented it so I just want you to uh, uh, use your common sense your logic so when after set is called will name change so will object name that is the owner of set after the set is called somewhere in in the here so in here if I have created 
uh, let's create let's add names wait include why don't I have my name dot header file here what the devil is going on save it huh uh, sorry try and hold on for a second I just want to make sure that my thing is set properly open where are my files huh okay so uh, okay a booboo has been made let me just fix that so in here darn it okay uh, let me just copy these things B bear with you for a second sorry I copied the wrong thing one two uh, three four five six six seven one two three four five six seven eight so these are the ones that I want copy and paste oh not there paste here so I have everything now let me remove these and these you see what happened in, uh, by mistake I made a link to the other one uh, save changes uh, no don't save don't save okay we're gone now I'm gonna go back to the now I'm gonna go back to the folder and in here I'm gonna revert the previous one I don't want it to change so I'm gonna to go toward this get revert that's one of the good things about um, github that I can simply undo what I've done without any damage being done okay so now in here I'm gonna add the existing files not from previous one here one two uh, three four five six seven okay I think now we're in business okay let's come back in main in here now I'm gonna say include that's better name.h perfect now a uh, Tran back to the question so if in here if I say for example name n and I set the name to fardat okay so that's how I call my function set in name that's the set function when I ca call the function ear and oh name dot h when I call my function set here do you think logically name object will change afterwards will set modify the change the the, the name What's no the I don't think so so you don't think that the value will change when I call the set yeah I think it should be uh, validated first before you no set no 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 don't go don't do that after validation and all the good stuff and everything that we have done when set completes its job will be set will name m value change gets modified yes yes it will good so this will modify the name good perfect that's all I wanted to know it will change now um uh, yes professor okay now when I am over here calling the get function do you think get getting the name will change the value of name Uh, uh, yes, uh, because we will then uh, uh, access the get function. No, we, I have, a, I have a question. Uh, so if I tell you what is your name, what is your last name? What are you going to tell me? What is the answer? Uh, uh, Sharma. Okay, did that so, change uh, your last name? Uh, no. I just got your last name, correct? Yes. Will it change your name? Uh, no. No, it won't. Thank you. So, so get should not change the name by getting I am just getting the value out I'm not setting it to anything 
because get is getting the value out I have to make sure that I don't make a mistake in get chain changing it because that's common sense because of that I am going to add const over here so that const makes forces get not to change or modify the owner that is the name object do we all understand this so uh, if but when said are you passing the 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 the, the the pointer as a constant if you don't want to change if you if you if you want to change it one more time on the set function mm -hmm. if you want to change the name why are you passing the pointer as a constant i want to change the name i want to change the value of the name i don't want to change the argument oh okay so you don't want to change the, the argument the so see I, I i love the question you asked so this const right now shows you that the name I am receiving from outside, I don't want to change that. I want to get the value of that one and change me. Oh, does, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, essentially, when set is called, this Farlat Solimandu should remain Farlat Solimandu, but N, whatever it was, now should be Farlat Solimandu too. Correct? Oh, okay. All right. Okay, I see. All right. Thank you. All right. Now, don't go, don't go, don't go. Now, in your opinion, should display change the name? No. No, thank you. So that has to be const too. Now the next person, please tell me. Chirac, do you think read should be const, should be read only? Or it should change the name? Read is reading from console and setting the name to a new value. Will it change the name? No, it's going to just read the value of that. Pardon me? Uh, it's going to just read the value. It reads the value from the console, and it's going to set the name to a new name, correct? Yeah, yeah. So will it change it? No. If it doesn't change, then how you are reading it? Mm. You are reading a name from console and you are setting a name to a value. Okay. It so will change it. It will change it. Yes. So, read cannot, should not be const since it is supposed to. It is supposed to supposed to change the name to what is entered from the screen. Okay, that's what's read it. So it cannot be constant. And say and and deallocate to when you deallocate, you want to change the name by freeing its memory. So it's gonna change. Therefore, uh, same thing as deallocate. The allocate cannot be const since it is freeing the memory of name. Are we okay down to this point? Obviously, because the value that we have over here doesn't have anything, it's a good idea to have some kind of a function to set the thing to an empty thing so and obviously that cannot be const either so i'm going to start with set empty and create it so let's create set empty and in this set empty what i'm going to do is this i'm going to actually say m value is set to null ptr so set empty will set the value to null ptr and now what this set is going to do okay so I'm going to go in this in here and create the set. So set over here. My apologies, just a second. Just a second. Uh, 
yes as I, was, as I was saying so set over here is supposed to set what I have to uh, uh, the uh, set the, the value over here to the name that is coming in so I'm gonna call it uh, so uh, let me actually I'm gonna say void name set const character pointer value or name now I'm going to start uh, doing dynamic memory allocation so I'm gonna bring utils in and in here I'm gonna say m value will be set to new character strlen of name plus one and copy into m value the value of name and therefore it's gonna set the value to whatever it is are we okay with this obviously this is not only thing that I need to do I have to make sure that if the person who's sending the name to me is actually setting something what if they they sent me nothing or what if I'm worse what if they send me a pointer that is null like what if they have something like this they forgot to set it and they just set it like that if that's the case I should not crash my application like that I have to set my name to a safe empty state to actually fix that problem I have to make sure that I am validating the 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 what should we call it the uh, argument that is receiving to a valid value so in here I have to say if name is not null and name is not empty then do this name is not null and empty okay <clears throat> how many of you uh, I remember lazy evaluation from IPC 144 lazy evaluation lazy evaluation lazy evaluation no that's sad okay the C language is a lazy language let me tell you why it is a lazy language because when it it, it goes through a condition to check if it reaches to con to a conclusion before it checks the whole thing it's just gonna stop so if this the name that I'm sending over here is null if this becomes null then this is false false and anything is false because of that it won't bother to check the rest of it even if it was true or whatever it is it is not going to test it over here so it's just so essentially I don't want to waste time on this lazy evaluation yeah so it's not going to continue the rest it's not going to evaluate the rest so the rest will not be touched but if I do it so therefore name zero will not be checked if it's empty or not if name is null because of lazy evaluation if it's null it's false false and anything is false therefore the rest of it will not even be looked at but if you put this thing in another order then your program may crash why because if name that is being passed over here is actually null if you have null PTR passed over here somehow the value is null the name is null zero after null it means you are trying to treat null as an address therefore it's gonna immediately crash over here with the either null pointer assignment or segmentation fault because you didn't first check it needs to first test this one to go to the second one that's why the order of not null and empty is uh, you know is uh, uh, a must that you have to always follow which means 
always you have to first check the pointer to be null or not then you should see the place it's pointing to is empty or not do we understand this this is called lazy evaluation that can be done can be used in many 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 smart ways uh, I'll explain soon and you'll see what I mean so I'm gonna in my code I'm gonna when the opportunity kicks I'm gonna actually use lazy evaluation and you will see what I mean so now that we have done this name is not going to be null and everything's good but the thing is that set can be called anytime so I can set and I can display the name and then I can set it again if that's the case what happens to the previously allocated thing if value is already pointing to something if value is already pointing to something here if value is already pointing to something in here and I want to set it to another thing this statement at line 9 what it will do is that it's going to actually make this pointer point to another location with a new value and doing so it will simply sever this connection and what happens is that what we have over here will become memory leak so we cannot allow that to happen that's why what we need to do what we must do is to deallocate the memory before doing anything now although I haven't even used uh, written the the deallocate but it is in my wish list so I'm gonna use it I'm just gonna say deallocate and with time when the time comes I'm gonna write the code for it so so first I have to deallocate make sure m value is empty and nothing is being touched then I have to set it to something are we good with this Shirak why not misclick sorry sir all right no problem so the next thing I want to do over here is get get is easy I just want to return the uh, whatever the name is so in here I'm gonna say uh, vo uh, constant character pointer a name get and const obviously and then in this one I'm simply gonna say return return uh, m value and because it is constant character pointer automatically it's going to be casted to a constant character pointer and therefore people getting the address of my value won't be able to overwrite it because it's constant are we okay with this next thing I want to do is to display the name now display has a ritual it's it's some kind of a thing that you have to remember even if we don't understand what the heck is going on with Farda, what Farda's saying at the moment, memorize the signature of display. And if you are not instructed to create the display in a specific way, this is how you are supposed to do. Display is supposed to display something on O stream. Are we clear on that? And are we clear that O stream is actually the class C out is made up of? beautiful so if that's the case what we need to do and don't ask me why for now what we need to do your display must return a reference of O stream and must receive a reference of O stream that is by default set to C out okay obviously I am inside a header file uh, I am here I have to have IO stream included to be able to have access to it and we know that because we are inside the uh, IO stream uh, not allowed to apply using namespace STD I can't do that because I can't do that I have to manually qualify every individual object so in here I have to say STD O stream and here I have to say std o stream and in here I have to say std c out which means my display will receive a reference of o stream 
if the reference is not applied by default it's gonna set that one to C out so essentially OSDR will represent C out and at the end it's going to return it and how do we implement it the implementation of it happens like this so in this play you use the OSDR in this play you use the OSDR as if you are using C out so I want to print the name first I have to see if it exists or not so I have to say if name and name okay um, or what we can do sorry not name m value and value what did I do if m value and m value so if val if, if if it exists I'm gonna print it out using OStream not C out OSDR and in here I'm gonna say m value so I'm just print the value and if it doesn't exist then I have to print no name so I'm or whatever business logic dictates but let's say we want to we want to call it no name so I'm gonna call it no name and that's that and at oh sorry O stream not I stream O stream and then at the end I am going to return that O stream that's how displays are created you display whatever you're supposed to display in your class using OSDR as if you are using C out and then at the end you return that O stream out do we understand how we have to do this and it's the exact same thing with reading reading is getting it from iStream so it should return iStream reference and receive iStream reference ISDR let's call it that is defaulted to STDCN. You should may be able to do this with your eyes closed. This is something standard that you're going to keep doing over and over and over. If in a workshop we tell you displays, uh, displays uh, prototype or display signature is like this, then don't do this. But if you don't, if we don't tell you how, that's how you do it. So now to implement read, it's the exact same thing with absolutely no difference. So I'll create that one. So I'm going to use iStream to read, but reading is much more complicated than the other one. When I'm reading, I'm, over I'm overriding a dynamic memory. So what I need to do is to first deallocate. Okay, then I have to read this string and dynamically put it inside my name, which I'm going to actually do in my utils. So I'm going to create something that actually receives a dynamic string. So uh, in my utils, I'm going to create a function that returns a character pointer. And I'm going to say uh, get uh, or read dynamic C string. And obviously I'm going to receive iStream over here so I need std iStream over here ISTR that is set to std CN so as you see potatoes brought to any read that I'm doing I'm following the same feature obviously because I want to return the dynamic string I cannot return ice stream if I could I would but I but I need that uh, pointer so I leave it like this so now in here I simply I'm going to say m value will be set to uh, u dot uh, get dynamic string from I str so I simply pass that i stream to this one to be reused as it goes through um, I don't know why it's giving me an error uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. what did I do oh I forgot to make it a reference that's why that's better okay now we're good yeah so now that it's passed and we're good so that receives the name and uh, and at the end I'm gonna say return I stream so I implemented that let's go do the uh, I stream in utils so we can actually receive a dynamic string with a variable uh, length I'm gonna write it in a crappy way now but later on we're gonna make it more efficient and better so for now uh, let's just take a look at it see how we're gonna do it 
So read dynamic string, what I need to do, because I don't know how big it's going to be, I'm going to create a statically uh, allocated local variable. So I'm going to create character, let's call it temp, and say 1024 characters. Hopefully nobody's going to make something bigger than that. And then after this, what I'm going to do, I am going to uh, read the value right into it. So I'm going to say istr.getLine into temp for 1024. So that's going to get the value. And if it fails, it's going to fail the ISDR. So in here, I'm going to say if ISDR was successful, which means if the reading was successful, now I'm going to have over here character pointer to return. Okay, or I can say dynamic string to return. Okay, dynamic string to return of mine, and I'm going to set it to null PTR. Okay, so now, so if I stream fails, if somebody puts more than 1000 characters, I'm going to fail and I'm not going to show anything, which is fine. I'm not going to allocate anything. But if it was successful, it means they did it properly. Now I'm going to say dynamic uh, string to return will be set to new character uh, str len because I am in utils. I'm, I can just simply use str len, str len of temp plus one, and uh, str copy into dynamic string to return. from temp so that is copied and at the end dynamic string to return will be returned so how this function works very simple and straightforward it receives the i stream reference it uses it as cn so it gets in here creates a locally uh, statically uh, local statically allocated memory which is 1024 temp and create a uh, a pointer sets it to null, tries to get that from string. If user enters less than 1000 characters, it accepts it, measures the size, allocates exactly that much memory, copies the value into dynamic string to return, and then returns it. And because this is an automatic variable, it's going to die right at the end of the utils, no memory wasted, life is beautiful. And if you wanted to actually not use any statically allocated memory, you could. We could simply have this one created dynamically like that. So we have the temp thingy over here dynamic. Uh, try to allocate memory into it. And if it's successful or whatever, whatever the reason will be at the end, uh, before I return that one, I can delete the temp. So now this is fully dynamic. I'm not my executable is not going to be even the temporary pointer that I have over here is dynamic. So it's going to have thousand characters, one k, not thousand, one k characters is going to be allocated over here, and then gets it, then resizes it to the proper size, returns the proper size out, and deletes the temporary thing. Therefore, a dynamic string is read, and the pointer that is returning, the address that is returning, will be the address of what was read from console. Are we okay with this? Obviously, to write this program even better, what I could do over here is to go in here and say, hey, I can actually set a delimiter for this too. I can say character delimiter and I, by default, I can set that to new line, okay? In case somebody wants to use this to read comma-separated value from somewhere, they can still do it. So if they don't mention what the delimiter it's going to be, it's going to be new line. But if they do mention, I can actually, uh, I can actually use a delimiter for it, and therefore, I'm going to add the delimiter here. So what happens is that if they don't say, I'm going to read it up to new line from console. If they wish to stop at a comma, at a slash or anything, they can use it for that one too. So this read dynamic streak can work in both ways and pretty handy function to use. Are we okay with this? So now that I have this beautiful thing, I can come over here and um, in here, my name was going to work properly because I'm just passing ISDR over here. 
the delimiter will be new line and I'm going to get that get and set the value to it and if it fails it's going to set the value to null no harms done and it is in a safe empty state are we okay with this this is usually how I program when I want the function I just call it and put a prototype and call it and after I'm done I'll go implement it like this it doesn't break the, the train of thought I just all I need to do too is to add the uh, the prototype in here and after I'm done my code hopefully is going to work and deallocate we know how it's well we're gonna write it it's not like a, a tough thing to do deallocate simply deletes the uh, DM value and what it does it uh, sets it to null afterwards because that's the rule okay and I think now my name is almost complete uh, with what I needed so let's actually run it and see how we're gonna do it so um, uh, what I am going to do over here will be this I'm gonna come in this program thingy of mine and simply say over here simply say over here name n obviously I'm gonna say n dot set empty if I don't do that if I don't set it to empty uh, that's gonna so let's not set it to empty and see what happens uh, and at the end I'm gonna say n dot deallocate so if I don't set it to empty and I run the program this is what's gonna happen so function uh, a program gets executed uh, it comes right into name name is created but as you see name has garbage in it value because I didn't set it to anything it has some garbage value in it when it comes to set it comes in here and tries to deallocate the memory that doesn't belong to you and that causes an exception hey you're trying to delete something it had some garbage value in it but it doesn't know it's garbage it thinks it's an address that belongs to it it wants to delete it it can't it fails so I have to make sure that I am actually setting it to empty right out of the bath so now now that I set it to empty I'm just gonna come in here oh it's still running the old one okay so okay now it comes to n it goes to set empty sets the value to null now it comes to uh, deallocating when it deallocates null value can be deallocated delete simply ignores it comes back in here name is not null it has far that in it so it's gonna go through it get the length allocate copy come out and then it's gonna go over here uh, display m value is not null so it's gonna display the value and after displaying the value as you see where is the value that is displayed the value is displayed uh, let me put another display over here Uh, let's put another display over here so it comes over here. now it sets it to John Doe recompiling sets it to John Doe so now it says I want to set it to to John Doe it deallocates the old one so far that Solimano will be deallocated now it comes over here reallocates it and set it to a new one and displays it and as you see the two displays are coming back to back within each other I don't want that I want to go to new line no sweat because I designed my display properly that actually returns an O stream over here when it's done it returns the C out out so all I need to do is to just add an end L over here I don't need to have anything new because display is returning the reference of C out therefore when it returns the end L is gonna print and go to a new line and we are done are we okay with this all right so now that we have done display this sucks I don't like it I don't have to remember every single time I have to set this thing to display and set this thing to deallocate I don't want this I want to be able to uh, so let me just put it like this uh, I'm gonna say um, a I want to kind of make this automatic why do I have to think about 
what happens if my name is created why shouldn't the compiler be able to automatically make everything good when the co object comes to life the answer is that we can and I want your undivided attention to this and I want to say something very important and I mentioned this 50,000 times and I always put emphasis for it and I say this is important your life depends on it and I keep telling you this and still you make a mistake so this is the time do I have your attention okay I am going to talk about a procedure this procedure that I am talking about is not a function I am not talking about a function I am talking about the procedure this thing really looks like a function but it's not a function it is complete something completely different so based on what you hear about from what I'm saying am I going to show you a function now no perfect in the other class actually somebody said yes okay now the question is that so so what I'm about to write over here it looks like a function but it's not a function a function can be called this thing cannot be called what is this procedure that I write this procedure is called the constructor it looks like a function but it doesn't have a return type all functions have return types they are either void or something else so this one does not have a return type because it doesn't have a return type it is not a function and the name of the function is crazy too the name of the function is the same name as the class so in here I'm gonna say name and I do like that and the next one is called the destructor the destructor is a procedure that carries the name of the class but it has a tilde at the beginning so this is what we call a default or no argument constructor and this is what we call a destructor okay now I am going to implement it so it looks like a function when I actually create it you will see that it's like a function the only thing that is noting to you that this is not a function it's a constructor is the fact that it's carrying the same name of the class and it doesn't have a return type so anything you wish to happen when the object is just coming to life you write in here and I want to set it to empty as a matter of fact I don't think anyone else other than constructor or my own functions need to set me set my name to empty so I'm gonna actually bring this set, set empty of mine into the private part of the class so name will call set empty and it's when it's done and also the destructor over here right before the object is going out of the scope the destructor will be called right before the object is dying the destructor will be called automatically so what do I do anything I want to do to clean up before I go I put it over there and that's deallocate and as a matter of fact nobody should be able to deallocate my name but me in my constructor or in my destructor or in my functions if I need to so that's why I put those things over there now putting those things over there creating that default constructor and the destructor as you see these two are private you cannot call it but we don't need to all I need to do is this now I create a name set it display it, do whatever I want to do with it automatically when the name is created by default it will actually set itself up to be safe right off bat so when I run the program I'm gonna immediately call over here F11 and I'm gonna hit F11 to see what is it gonna get called and as you see it jumps into the constructor it sets it to empty now I have a function uh, class to work with and everything ran properly and when it ends automatically the destructor of n is called deallocating everything and therefore no memory leak remember your resources are gathered that initialized in the constructor and your resources are cleared up and given back to the system in the destructor are we okay with this now that we have done this you can see that I can actually create other names too so in here I'm gonna say I'm gonna say uh, Nina 
uh, doe. So Nina doe is the object name, and I'm gonna have another name f, and I'm gonna call that thing, um, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna set that one to Fred Soleil. Okay. Now at the end, not n f, and I'm gonna say f dot display. Go to new line. Now let's see what's going to happen. Please understand that first n is created, then f is created. So if I have give me a second, let me check something. I have markers from pre-COVID era. Okay, so. Now, I want you to look at this. So, I have two markers. One is black, the other one is red. I put the black one over here, okay? So, the black one is on the table. Then, I put the red one over black, okay? Now, if I want to remove which one is going to be removed first, red one which one was put on the table first black one fantastic so you should remember that with all the objects that you create the object that gets created first automatically and next that one is going to get deleted last the one that was created last will get deleted first and it goes back like that do we understand this so objects are destroyed in reverse order. And how do I minimize myself? Like this. All right. So now if I actually run the program, I'm just going to run it right over here. We know which one is going to get created first. So I'm going to run right to the end. So it's going to run right to the end. And now as you see, uh, Fred Solanina and John Doe is uh, created, but we know that Fred Soleil is the one that was created last. Now, if I press F11, you see that the destructor that is called is the destructor deleting Fred Soleil. And therefore, Fred Soleil will be gone last. Okay? So, and we can always, uh, you know, if you recall, we can always create debugging statements to follow these things. So, I can go in my utils. And in here, I can say define debug. So I have a debug, oh debug, debug created. Now in here, I'm gonna I'm gonna come in my uh, constructor over here. Okay, I'm gonna come to the constructor. Okay, in here I'm gonna say if defined automatically, as you see, he knows that you're gonna do the find. I'm gonna say see out creating name uh, defaulting name. Okay, <coughs> <coughs> so I'm defaulting name in here. Oh, I've never used scene and see out here, so I need to include uh, include IO stream. And using namespace. STD. Okay, so now I have C out. Now in here I'm going to say in deallocate, I'm going to say if the if defined. And in here I'm going to say C out deleting. And in here I'm going to say M value. Okay, so I'm deleting M value. And when I run the program, you can literally see. The sequence of things happening over here so it says defaulting name oh it actually what happened it crashed what what did I do why did it crash that's amazing let's see why it crashed
deleting M value before that. Let me run it one more time. This is crazy. Oh, it crashed when it's actually. Okay, I'm going to see what happens. Let me see what did I do wrong. Okay, I'm actually excited. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to go. Um, so this is setting. It goes over here. Sets. Uh, oh. Can you it so you, you wrote uh, if def instead of if and def? No, that's correct. If they find the bug. Oh. oh, set empty. No. Okay, I'm going to run it and see what happens. This is interesting. Seriously. So it comes in here, comes to set empty, goes over here, set the value to null. Okay. Then it comes and prints the faulting name. Good. Now it goes to F. It goes to set empty and null and says defaulting name so far so good so far so good now it comes to set for it so late it goes to deallocate ah because in deallocate it's i put it at a wrong place i'm a bad person not in here i want it <sighs> x not there I need to put it in a destructor. Where is my destructor? This is where I want to put it. And in here, I have to actually see if it's null or not. Okay? So in here, I'm going to say M value. And otherwise, I'm going to put uh, empty, empty name. Okay? So wait, what was it doing? Pardon me? What was it doing? Uh, so what happens is that because uh, before setting it always deallocates. Because bef let, let's walk through it before because before setting it always deallocates. At the mm -hmm. moment of deallocation, it wants it to deallocate the null pointer for delete. It doesn't matter. But in here, I was tr I was trying to pre print a null pointer, and that was wrong. Okay. Okay, so okay. Now I fixed it. I'm saying if it's if it's not null, print the M value. If it is null, print empty name. So uh, it's not that's not going to happen again. Okay. So that's even debugging statements you need to be careful about. So I'm going to run it one more time and run it. Now it's going to be okay. Hopefully, stop and run. There you go. So defaulting name, Fred Sole, and as you see, it's deleting in reverse order. Uh, are we okay with this? And obviously, if you don't want your defined the debug statements, go to your utils, just comment your debug, compile and run again. They're all gonna vanish because that if the if not the blank is is blocking it. You see, so this is a beautiful way to add debugging statements in your code, and you can put it anywhere you want. If you want it to be displayed, you act you you uncomment the debug otherwise you activate and the debug statement is gone do we understand how to add debugging statements to the program fantastic well next day we want to next thing we want to do over here is to see what if i want to edit up what if i didn't want to actually set it i want it to be like an integer if it's a name i want to be able to say over here fred soleil I want to actually set my name to something, initialize my name. How can I do that? It is very simple. In initialization, you are passing one value to the constructor. So therefore, all you need to do for initialization to happen is to have a one argument constructor. So in here, all I need to do is to create a one argument constructor saying name constant character pointer name first I have to do this so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna set it to us so I'm gonna call this actually value value and then I can actually implement that so what I need to do all I, all I need to do is to create the definition for it and then come over here and just set it up first of all I'm gonna say instead of defaulting name I'm gonna have a debug over here that says 
creating name using now in here I'm gonna say I'm, I'm, I learned my lesson last time in here I'm gonna say value and I'm gonna do like that value otherwise I'm gonna say no value okay so you can actually uh, make sure that this is value and value zero so in here I can actually do it like this that's the condition for it and then put the whole thing inside parentheses and and start say so this is creating name using that value and now what I what I can do over here I can actually start doing it so the very first thing I need to do because my the app my set needs it I need to set my m value to null otherwise uh, otherwise the the allocation in set is going to fail so that has to be set to null PTR but the best way to do it is to just initialize it in here so any constructor that calls m value will be null beforehand so in here I'm, I, I add it but I'm gonna actually comment it saying no need since m value is initialized okay is initialized here so in here initialized to null PTR okay are we okay with this all right so these type of initializations happen before your constructor although constructed that is the first thing that happens in the lifetime of your uh, uh, lifetime of your object uh, initializations happen before constructor now comfortably I can over here say set to value so essentially it's gonna set my object to a value as right off the bat and, and set it up and if it's not then it's gonna set it as null so now I can actually run the program and if I run the program you will see that if I run the program you will see that oh my debugging statements are off let me turn them on compile and run so as you say it says defaulting name that's line number seven then line number eight creating use creating name using Fred Soleil so it's actually using that then it's going to display Fred Soleil, display Nina Doe, display John Doe, and in reverse it's going to delete Fred Soleil and John Doe. Are we okay with this? Quick right. question, Professor. Go ahead. So uh, we just created an overload for a procedure by for for the constructor. Oh yeah, constructor. Okay, yeah, that's what I wanted to know. Yeah, we overloaded. We overload it. You can overload the constructor like a function, although it's not a function, but you yes. can overload it like a function. Let me minimize these. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, bec um, and minimize this one. So, in here, I have name set empty. I, I've done it that way. Okay. And in here, I have uh, name set. Okay. And I, so um, the two different things. Not only that, but let's say let's say I want to have a title for this. Okay, so let's say I want to create a title. Okay, first of all, um, let me just check something in here. No, I don't need to see this allocation thingy over here. I can actually have this allocation done in so allocation and copying see because now I want to have another one I'm gonna actually put this one right inside uh, yeah I'm gonna put the, this one in the utils too why do I do it put it here so I'm gonna go in utils create the exact same thing like read that I have over here I'm gonna say character pointer allo copy 
so it allocates and copies and in here I've got to be constant character pointer source so instead of doing that I'm gonna do this because I, I, I need to keep doing it for different things I'm gonna create it over here like this and copy that that logic from there and put it in allocation and copying in here so essentially this m value is going to be character pointer value okay that I have that I want to do and I'm copying into it and name will be source and that's going to be source and I'm going to return the value to be full to make it foolproof return to make it foolproof what I can do is to nullify this so that character is nullified then I'm gonna go value and what I will do over here is this I'm gonna say if source exists if it's empty let's create an empty one but if it exists then do the copying if it doesn't exist don't do anything so if it's not anything value is gonna return null which is perfectly good and if it if it does exist it's gonna actually uh, uh, create a dynamic one for me so allocation and copying um, is allocopy uh, allocopy is good allocopy is good so it's gonna copy and return it. Let's see if there is anything else in here yeah you know, the only thing I need to do over here to make it super safe saying if value so which means if the allocation is unsuccessful value will be null therefore the copying is not going to happen so this makes it super safe this allocation and copy is is bulletproof nothing's gonna go wrong with this and uh, now I can come back in my main instead of doing this I can simply say uh, you allo copy name see are we okay with this see it makes our life easier now I can add the second thing let's say I want to have a name that has a title too so I want to be able to add a title to a name so in here I'm gonna add another thing character pointer m title initialize it okay and I'm gonna create a two argument constructor so let's say if they are if they do it with two I'm gonna have name constant character pointer title and constant character pointer name so that's gonna be my my constructor it accepts two things a title and a name and let's create that one so I'll create it over there so I have it right over here now now what I need to do over here uh, everything is nullified so we are good so I'm gonna set uh, name and set the name so that sets the name and everything is done and for the title I'm gonna say M title is set to allo copy you dot allo copy of title so if they want to they can add a title for it but I'm not gonna have it added for set I just want to show you an example of two uh, two arguments created over here so when it's two now so I'm gonna go in display and in display I'm just gonna say if if M title exists and M title is not empty then display the M title OSDR M title and put a space and then display the name okay so um, so now we can come in here and for example create another one I'm gonna call it name s and in here I'm gonna say it, it, I can now uh, create it using the uh, function version of the constructor so in here I can actually say uh, uh, sir um, John 
ecto, okay? So now this one is actually a sir, okay? And um, um, if I display it, I'm going to go n.display, uh, sorry, s.display. And obviously in here, I need to uh, put a debugging statement so I can, I can see what is being created. Where is my debug statement? Um, let me go to name name.cpp so let's add, add a debugging statement for the two argument constructor so in here I'm gonna say uh, if not defined oh no no uh, if defined the bug for some reason I didn't want to complete it this time uh, and if okay so that's that one now in here I'm gonna say uh, see out I'm gonna say see out uh, the title uh, uh, I'm gonna say creating name using um, title title no title and and the same thing for name so put this one over here trying to write the the code as safe as possible that's why this is all happening so in here I'm gonna say um, I'm going to say over here name name no name okay now if I run the program you will see that it's going to create it as follows if I don't have any mistakes we'll find out now it says defaulting uh, uh, oh I forgot to do the oh, I have two John Doe's I have two John Doe's. I'm going to remove one of the John Doe's. Confusing. <laughs> Let me this set take this set out. So Nina Doe is fine. Okay, so so there you go. So uh, in here, I'm going to say defaulting name, creating name using yada yada yada, and then uh, creating name is Sir John Doe, uh, Fardat Salimano, Nina Joe, and Sir John Doe is the one with the title. Deleting. Uh, the last one first that is John Doe that was Sir and deleting Fred Soleil and then Nina Doe in reverse order uh, are we okay with this now having this thing set having uh, said this and doing this uh, what we uh, need to do over here is to understand um, uh, that uh, the what the one argument constructor can be called using the function notation too so so you could say name f fred soleil but i rather all mostly see the bottom one okay using the function notation not function call but function notation so you can do it so this is so these two are the same same as above okay and and it's and this works for anything like I can say over here integer I 100 see and I can actually display that I can go see out I so as you see now like if I run the program you will see that actually uh, um, what happened to my eye oh there you go the hundred is printed over here so it doesn't make any difference you can do it like this or you can do the universal way too so you can say integer i and do it like that it's the same thing as the other one no difference it's the same as up as you see the same thing and uh, I haven't tried it but I think we can do that too so I can say over here name f and I can do it like this, uh, Fred 
So they should that should be same as above. So if I run this, that's what's going to happen, right? Same thing. And even for this one, you can do it. So you should be able to. So I can say over here, name S, and I can do like this, sir, comma, John, do. That should be same as above too. That's the universal way of initialization, so I'm going to comment that, and it's going to work like this, as you see. Oh, uh, it became sire instead of sir. Okay. Um, are we okay with this? All right, and uh, read and stuff should work properly too, so um, um, we can go through that. But I want to talk something about uh, uh, set over here. Um, There is this uh, statement in C++. It's called this, okay? It's called literally this. When used inside a class, this is a pointer, is the address of the current object. So essentially, type of this over here is name pointer. Okay? This will hold the address of the current object. It's in any class. If I put this inside employee, becomes the address of that employee. So if it's in F, it becomes address of F. It be it's, if it's S, it becomes address of S. If it's N, becomes address of N. Do we understand this? Now, what happens if I put an asterisk beside a pointer? If I put an asterisk beside a pointer, what happens? Can somebody volunteer and tell me? When you, when you say to asterisk this, what does it mean? It's not address anymore. It becomes a what? A reference. A reference. Thank you. So this is now a reference. And because it's a reference, I can play this trick. Usually when I have a void, I don't return a void. I actually return the reference of the owner. So what I do in here, I say return this. So name after it's done is going to return reference of its owner. Whoever it sets, it's going to return the reference. And I do it for everything because sometimes it comes handy. Like even set empty that you have, you can do it. Okay, but well, for now, let's just stop right here. So set is returning the address of the current object. I'm going to say therefore. Therefore, this becomes the reference of the current object. Object current object that is essentially name reference. Got it? Now that I created that one, usually when you return reference of an object, then you have cascading effects waiting for you. Now that I return this thing out, set is returning the reference of the current object. Therefore, in here, set is returning the reference of n. Then why do I have to write n display? I can simply bring this back up and put it right after this. Take a look. You see that? So I can say n set Nina Joe do dot display. So because n set, let's actually walk through that and see what happens. So when I run the program, it comes right down to here when I'm actually setting. And when I'm setting it, as s display is returning c out, n set is returning reference of n. So it comes over here. First, it's going to set it to Nina Joe. And then it returns this. So the whole set Nina Joe 
returns the reference of n therefore right after that it will call the display of n and goes over here and actually prints the uh, Nina Joe thingy for me and I'm gonna have that what happening over there so this is very 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 important to know so this holds the address of the current object target of this holds the reference of the current object uh, do we understand this and this can really come in handy so let me just put this one over here and I'm gonna say uh, B post I'm gonna say const constructor destructor this.cpp okay I'm gonna give you another example with less stuff in here because I have so many things it's becoming confusing uh, let me see what do I need yeah so I'm gonna clear it up so I'm just gonna have an F and an S so I have two things in here that I want to set what if I want to be able to say s dot set f so I want to set the one object to another object how can I do this it's simple you really write write the function for it so the set function that I have I'm gonna write another set over here saying again name as usual set in here constant name reference n so I'm actually copying one name into another do we understand this okay so now let's do that and how do I do this uh, so let's create the definition for it and I'm gonna come come over here and do it so okay first of all at the end I'm gonna return this I'm not gonna even bother okay so that's that that's what I'm doing then in here I have to copy whatever the other one has into this one so first uh, oh my Diallo I think I had memory leak people yeah I had memory leaking the past few things I forgot over here to delete M title so in the previous ones I had memory leak in the previous executions I had memory leak now I don't <laughs> no PTR okay so what I need to do because I'm doing copying the first thing I'm gonna do is deallocate to so make sure that everything is deallocated deallocate okay then I'm gonna say M title of mine will be set to n dot M title oh, will be set to u dot allo copy M n dot uh, M title so I'll copy the title of the other one if the title exists it's gonna copy then I'm gonna say M value of this one will be set to u dot allocate allo copy n dot M value so essentially it copies the other one okay and returns this so now if I do something like this uh, and I come over here to my program if I say I can display say f dot display and go to new line s dot display and go to new line and then I can show it afterwards as to see if it actually s is set to Fred Soleil or not and when I run the program one is set to another and life is beautiful so as you see it created those so it has it and then this uh, they are one is set to the other one one is essentially copied to the other one are we okay with this the problem over here that gets created is this just take a look what if I have something like this say I have over here something like in the name reference I'm gonna call it s ref and I'm gonna set this one to the reference of s so essentially s ref and s are the same objects two different names for the same object do we understand this so if I do something like this if I actually do something like this and by mistake later on I'll go set s dot set s ref compiler is not going to give me an error compiler is going to tell you hey you're setting one object to another 
but when the program is actually running and it gets to that point without knowing you are copying an object to itself do you understand this so I don't have two different objects over here it's only one so when it's actually running put the wrong one sorry when it actually is running it comes in here first it deallocates everything that I have now which means S is gonna get deallocated correct but when S is deallocated so is N because N and S are the same then it says allocate and copy the null and put it over here so what I did over here why was without knowing actually destroying and not copying anything so instead of setting something to itself which supposed to not do anything I just wipe myself out do we understand this this is another use of this pointer so what I can do over here is this I can come in this set and I say if my address is not equal to, uh, to the address of n that I am copying so in here let's let yeah n that I'm copying then do the copy so what happens over here is this for the first copy that is happening happening that is a legit copy for the first copying that is happening that is a legit copy when I actually come to the function and run it the address that I have is 987 and the address of n is 948 so there are two different addresses because there are two different addresses there are two different objects therefore copying happens life is beautiful and I'm going back and we are done but if I actually go to the second set over here because when it comes in and they are both the reference of the same object therefore the first one is at 978 and now the second one is at 9782 and because the addresses are identical it's just gonna ignore it and no copying is gonna happen which for us is good news when you copy something to itself no different no no uh, changes going to happen and therefore the display is going to display things properly as it should and that ladies and gentlemen is another thing that we use when we are actually uh, using the this pointer this can be can can be used to record to to identify if the reference of coming object is the same as me or not and prevent self copying are we okay with this And that concludes what we wanted to teach today. Constructors, destructors, all different types of constructors. And the destructor is only one type. They are not functions. You cannot call them. Um, like m to, to tell you how people make mistake. For example, when they are actually in here, what they do instead of calling set, they call the other one. They say, oh, calling this is like calling a two argument constructor I can put over here name and in here I'm gonna put null PTR and I'm gonna pass the value and compiler doesn't give you an error in here because it looks like you're calling the other constructor but this is not a function call constructors cannot be called in here at this line instead of a function call what the compiler is gonna do at line 13 is gonna create a nameless object of type n name create it and kill it right after so at line 13 instead of actually setting something you are just creating it's like an explosion a name gets created and poof dies immediately after nothing is set it has nothing to do with the object that you have because constructors cannot be called so don't make the same mistake don't think you are reusing your code constructor is not a function it cannot be called are we okay with this all right so for your task for the next time coming coming to the class would be using the name object in company and employee as practice so go in employee replace this put the name in it and use it instead okay
and you can actually fix the display for the employee that sucks this should be the same way that I mentioned it to you um, try it see if it works and then the next time we're gonna talk more about all these beautiful stuff any questions Sorry, can you repeat what we're supposed to, Just to do? Employee has a name, right? Yes. And company has a name, right? Yes. We just created an object called name. Okay. So instead of company has a name, you should have something like this. Name and name. And use okay. that one instead. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay, everyone. That's it. If there's no questions, I'm going to uh, end the session, go to bed, and may never come back. <laughs> Are you okay? Any questions? Sir. Yes. Uh, will you add these files to GitHub? Will I? Of course I will. Let me just do it right now. Give me a second. Now that you mentioned it, why don't I just put it right now? So, uh, Thank you. Uh, where are we? So not Z, we are in section F, I believe. And I am going to commit, select all, constructor, destructors, and this, commit. It's going to fail the first time because I changed it already. I'm going to pull it and push it again. Sanjit, you have it. Thank you. All right. All right, everyone. Have yourself a beautiful day. Uh, I'm going to post a recording as soon as it comes up. And um, that's it. Goodbye, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the day. Take it easy.